Boss Lady Conversations with Monica L. And Coach Kaya. Boss ladies are vulnerable, authentic, love, hopeful, abundant, respected. Boss ladies are you. Welcome back, listeners. Thank you for joining us for another Boss Lady Conversation Season 2. We are on YouTube, so please take a moment to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any of our Boss Lady Conversation episodes. I am Monica L., a boss lady, Cleveland-born, LA-raised on a journey of freedom and happiness. As an educator, entrepreneur, self-published author, and poet, I believe all things are possible through synergy. Let's get it. My IG handle is at Monica L underscore writer. Hey, and I'm your girl, Coach Kaya. I'm a boss wife, mompreneur, sister, writer, and certified transformational coach. I help people access their power, heal the trauma of their past, and reignite their dreams. Why? To manifest the miracles that actually matter, boss ladies. My IG handle is at I am Coach Kaya. We want to thank everyone who supports the Boss Lady Conversations podcast movement. This is a very, very, very special show today. Today, we're celebrating our one year anniversary of Boss Lady Conversations. And we're just excited for tonight's show because we have such a special, special, special guest here with us today. Boss Lady Monica L., what did you think we would be doing one year after we started our podcast? Oh my God, Coach Kaya, you know, we give all praise to God because I mean, it wouldn't be possible without God. And I am so thankful to you for all of your hard work and just, I'm overwhelmed by everyone's support. This has just been a blessing. (laughs) I know that first day we went into the studio, we were like, let's just see how it goes. And I think that is so important for boss ladies everywhere. Just to remember, you take the first step, God will take the rest. And then you just keep showing up and miracles could happen. So I just love you too. And I thank you for our sisterhood and our baby being one years old. Yes, <laughs> yes, one year, yes. And so many more years and blessings to come because we're just thankful. We're just overwhelmed by all the domestic and international support because at the end of the day, from Boss Lady Conversations, we want you to feel inspired and boss up to really go with after in your life. And speaking of being boss up to go after your dream, Today, we are so excited to have singer and actress Shaniqua Sean Day with us, okay? She's an actress, she's a singer, she's a fashion icon. She is inspiring love with her newly released single, Something About You, okay? It's already out. Check it out. It's a beautiful song and it's an amazing video that will inspire you. And it's also directed by Megan Good because sisters, they stick together. She is also known for her iconic performance as Angie, we love Angie, on Tracy Oliver's hit comedy series, Harlem, on Amazon Prime. Shaniqua is leaving a lasting impression in many hearts with her soulful and powerful voice. Born in New York City and raised in Richmond, Virginia, Shaniqua uses her roots to create music that can be felt across the world. Something About You was officially released on September 7th and is already solidifying its mark in R&B. We are so beyond excited to have her here today. And something I love about Harlem is that you feel like it's a show where you see yourself as a boss lady. Like every scene, you know, you can relate to it. You can feel the energy and you know that, that they're really portraying boss ladies everywhere in their everyday lives, the struggles, the triumphs, and most importantly, the sisterhood. Amen. I so love just everything about the show. Like I watched each episode and then at the end, I binge watched everything. So I cannot (laughs) wait to get into this conversation. I love music. I love the single. I just love her. Just, she just exudes just authenticity and she's a queen. So let's get into it, Coach Kaya. (laughs) Let's give a very warm, loving, and excited Boss Lady Conversations welcome to Shaniqua Sean Day. Woo! <laughs> hey, <laughs> Boss Lady. Hey, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, it's no. It's you. all of our pleasure. <laughs> I mean, truly, you you are so authentic. We've done our research, and you just come with it all. You're like, this is me. 
<laughs> take me as I am. Right. Listen, <laughs> okay. I only was born in this skin. I can only be me one time. And mm. I done tr- started traveling this world now and have not found another woman like me. So I'm oh. going to embrace being me. <laughs> you know? I know I that's know. right. That is right. So with that being said, which one song would you choose to demonstrate your boss lady journey and why? Ooh, one <laughs> song. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good question. Okay. Oh. Now, it's it's got to be Moment for Life by Nicki Minaj yeah. featuring Drake. Yes. Because one thing that I love about that song so much is that from the beginning of it, like the very first line, it acknowledges the beginnings, the starting from the bottom quote unquote, the, it's I fly with the stars in the skies and I am no longer trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And I remember (laughs) how bad it was to just try to survive. And there's still some moments where there's like a emotional struggle to survive. And I think that's something that as we grow in financially, but also grow in ourselves, we are constantly finding a way to love ourselves in new, mm-hmm. new ways and, and new rooms. As you get into a room, each room, you might feel a little bit insecure of being there or having to adjust. And I feel like that moment, that, that song specifically, it acknowledges mm-hmm. every climb up and also gives respect to the, to the beginnings as well. And so mm. I just love that song. And then I have a personal relationship with that song. I feel like everywhere I go, whenever there's a pivotal moment playing, it a pivotal, pivotal moment playing, a pivotal moment's happening, it'll randomly be playing in the streets. Mm. Like, oh I my remember, God, remember, that was not random. That's how, exactly. And I'm like, oh, this mm-hmm. is my heart song. I remember being in Toronto it was my first like film festival and first time out of the country. And we were walking into like the Intercontinental, some big hotel there. And I've got on, I think I had on like this, me and my relationship with Tool, I had on this like iridescent pink Tool top. And I'm getting out of the black car for the first time traveling in a black car. And I had been like living on my mama's couch for years prior. And like, this is my mama, I made it moment. And we're about to go do press in the Intercontinental. They have like the whole bottom floor mapped out, marked out for press. And I'm crossing the street and I hear that song playing. And I'm like, (laughs) I had already had a relationship with that song, but I'm like, Jesus, in the voice of Nicki Minaj. (laughs) So that is like my, that is my boss lady song. And also to me, it takes, it, it gives you a very meaningful, job and that you have to take in the moment and be present you have to make sure that you remember because we can get busy like getting ready for the ball that we don't get a chance to admire being there Mm. be a chance to like breathe and being in that setting and so that song too as well is like give you a second to like have this moment and realize how special it is and be be present and joyful in this thing it's because it's because what you it's what you prayed for it's what you worked so hard for and so yeah i really love that song <laughs> oh that's a good one <laughs> thank you yes. which our songs which our songs <laughs> oh gosh we have so many songs but <laughs> now you just don't set the bar i mean it all depends upon the day you know i'm a big fan of mary j blige and yeah. you know, I love "Take Me As I Am." You know, Ooh. that just came. That just came to me, like because yeah, you know, or have nothing at all. Okay. Hey. <laughs> yes. What about you, Coach Kaya? <laughs> you might have to just hit me with the Whitney Houston one moment in time. Hey. Mm. I, I don't know if I know that. Oh, we got to play that. We got to play that. Yeah. Okay, I got to add to my boss lady mix. Yes. Yeah, boss lady mix. <laughs> yes. Ooh, we got to get on there. Idea, please. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I like yes. that. Yes. And we're going to make sure we include your song as well. I was about yes. to say, you got to add something about you because it's about a busy boss woman finding yeah. another. Yeah. I want to talk yeah. about that later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Shaniqua, tell us about your journey to landing your role as Angie in Harlem and what you love about bringing this amazing character to life. 
Oh my gosh. So honestly, the moment I read the read Angie, I was like, that's mine. That's easy. I recognize this person. I recognize my aunties, my grandmas, myself, my friends, Jennifer Lewis, like people I've idolized. I can mm -hmm. see in this human being and bits of myself. And so it was as soon as I went in, I think the first audition I smashed. <laughs> Second audition, I had him crying. And then, and then by the test, oh my gosh. I think the first test went really well. Mm -hmm. No, the first test did not go well. And that's when the Lord had to give me some humility. And I think that was that's because, you know, we worked so hard for things. Like it was a, maybe a 10 year or so process before I got it. Oh. And before I, I booked my first TV show that went to series because I booked okay. pilots before and they're like basically tester episodes or they're like, oh, it's going to go. We like it. The network's so excited. And then it's like, uh, no, it didn't happen. And I really think because the Lord knew all that Angie was and that Angie was going to give me a level, a boost of self-confidence that I've never had before in my life. Like I've always been a confident human being, but no one is as confident as Angie Wilson, okay? <laughs> like no one has the confidence of Angela Wilson. And so if you're gonna play her, you need some humility. So you're not going home and be like, do you know who I am? Because that is who she is. <laughs> And so I think the Lord had the test not go well so that I could be humble in it and still, you know, we, we earn it anyway, but I had to dive in even more and knuckle up mm -hmm. and plant down even more and like really pray for it because the process after that was maybe like two months. Um, and then I got the final call that I had and we, we tested with Megan and everybody and then I got it. And my favorite part of bringing Angela Wilson to life is seeing a woman that looks like me on screen in this capacity. And I know that might be weird because like people are like, well, you're playing, you, it's you, but it's different to, I think about the younger version of me. Mm -hmm. And I think about all the little girls who look like me. I think about my cousins. I think about my aunties who didn't see themselves in this capacity, in this vivaciousness, in this, conf this confident yeah. pursuing their, her dreams. You know, because if we are there, if we are in the space where it, this kind of character anyway, we aren't allowed to be as fabulous as we are. Or they paint, they cover us in animal print and call it fa fashion. And, mm. you know, they love to put a, a, a thick girl in animal print. And so, <laughs> and so I just love seeing a woman who not only is blunt and authentic, but she's educated. Yeah. She, we, these women all met in college. And yeah. so they, they act like too, that education only sounds a certain way, only looks a certain way. Ooh. So I love the accent. I love the cur the, the Afro kinky hair and seeing her in pinks and yellows and blues and stripes. I love that level of representation. Yeah. And I think it's going to, I hopefully in the name of Jesus, open the door for more representation, more women like this to be able to play in all all levels of capacity. And I'm just grateful that, the, that God is using my body to be able to expand this, this very narrow image of what they know Black women as right now. I'm just happy to be in the mix. Oh, gosh. <laughs> You, you did wow, we, we're grateful too because you crack us up. You, you <laughs> crack you. us up. I'm like, does she have my job? Does she work with me? <laughs> she is a mess, but I know so many Angie's. I wish I was like, there's parts of me that's in here, but I'm like, no, you gotta be my friend. No, you think I'm fun? No, you ain't met. No, my cousin. <laughs> okay. And my God sister is so fast and so quick and so hilarious. My grandma. So yeah, wow. I'm just really glad that this woman is on screen and, and allowed to be funny but also you see her pains. You yes. get to see her striving for something. You get to see her in a work atmosphere, which is artistic and how beautiful it is to see a woman who is of, who's 30, still pursuing her dreams, still saying, "I'm no, I'm gonna be an artist. This is who I am. I just love that so much. Who hasn't settled. She doesn't settle in any aspect of her life. Woo. And I love that too, because we don't get to, we just don't get to see that all the time. If you do, again, it's like we're settling and taking what you can get or the Kirby body is the joke. And mm. Angie is no one's joke. She's telling you the real, the authentic, the truth, and while also being authentically who she is. And I just, I love me some Angie. Woo! <laughs> 
<laughs> we love Angie too. I think my one of my favorite scenes was when you and one of your, I guess, like co-stars in the play was actually having a romantic scene. And it looked like y'all was really in a bedroom, but y'all was on set. Okay. okay. <laughs> and he and was that's like, the time. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> And the director was like, y'all need to not do this here. <laughs> okay. And the thing was like that you would think that that's just, this is the first time, but the doctor was, the director goes like oh, something along the lines. Like I told y'all to stop. Y'all need to stop having sex. I'm like, how many times are they having sex <laughs> on set? And how is she not fired? Because <laughs> like, like, Andy does but what Andy, Andy wants to do. <laughs> okay. She does what she wants to do. And at the end of the day, I'm going to shut this show down. I'm going to do my job. Like <laughs> this is true. And yes. Andy, you shut it. So, Angie shut it down too, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> okay. Literally shut it down. Yeah, she literally shut it down. <laughs> she didn't mean to. Right. She just over that list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We love it. We love you. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Your energy is just exuding. So I, I know our boss lady listeners are just really enjoying this show. So yeah. along those lines, you know, season <laughs> one left us with many cliffhangers. What can you tell our viewers about season two? Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, don't, don't get, get in trouble. trouble. Yeah, right, right. Um, <laughs> Without getting in trouble. Yes. Yes. Well, I, what I love, so, oh my God, season two is so amazing in that I've never seen a show do this before, okay. but you see these women literally living in the repercussions of their actions from season one. Like, usually you, you watch a show and it's like a couple months later and you, they kind of hint at what happened or they're recovering. They're like on the precipice of getting over it. But in this show, mm -mm, you literally, season two, you see them deal with every single decision they made from last season. Oh, wow. Yeah. We don't let, there's no cliffhangers. There's no, oh, all of a sudden they're with this person. Nope. Tracy dropped us right back in. It's really good. It's really great. Oh my God. And so unique. I'm like, I love it. But that's also like what was so beautiful to me about season one, too, was that each episode like picked up right where you thought there was going to be a, a cliffhanger and there are cliffhangers, but you only got to wait a couple more seconds and boom, there you go. Like you have the answers right there. There's no cheating. Amazing. Yeah. That's Very exciting. exciting. <laughs> Yeah, season two, she does not skimp out. We do not cheat. We don't gloss over it. You're going to find they are dealing with it. They're dealing with Just it. Just like boss ladies do every single okay. day. Okay, you can't mm. run. Jennifer Lewis no. said you can't run, and I got the money to run. You can't <laughs> run from <laughs> I love Jennifer Lewis so much. She's the best. Yes. She's the best. Shout out to Jennifer Lewis. Amazing. <laughs> Mrs. Jennifer Lewis. So tell us, what do you love most about being a part of this phenomenal ensemble cast where you really showcase the power of like having chosen sisters who really love you and who really have your back in real life and on screen. So we just want to highlight like working with Megan Good who plays Camille, Jerry Johnson who plays Ty and Grace Byers who plays Quinn. What, what is it about the sisterhood that just works and resonates with people? It's, well, what is it about? I think it's God. Mm. It's God. He is literally and utterly all up in the midst. Like I can genuinely say I am in something that I prayed for. I got very specific during the time of unemployment. And <laughs> I remember crying to my friend who was a pastor at the, uh, still a pastor. Um, it was just like, I want my job. I want my job. And she's like, well, what do you want? And I was like, a TV show, duh. And she's like, well, this is the Lord speaking, be specific. And I wrote down five things that I wanted in the show. And one of them was to work with black women. And the other one was to begin and end with prayer. And the other things in that I wrote down in it are, have all been answered too. But this level of sisterhood, it really is just something that is so magical and so rare. I mean, you can have fun with people on set and you have a great time with your work friends or just like at any other office, but it's not many people that you work with that you that becomes your sister outside of it that like oh i'm st i was with you on monday and we ain't <laughs> been that since months for months we spending birthdays with each other and we got a group text and we just go back and forth and it's just so much love and support and i honestly i think it starts with the heads too it starts with our number one tracy oliver is incredibly loving and incredibly supportive and then megan being our number one i said 
set the tone. She's incredibly humble, very kind, so loving, like one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met. And underneath that, you can't help but follow suit. So even if there was going to be, I mean, there is no room for it, but there is no room for it because you have those people to look up to. So our bosses, my boss ladies are loving and and oh, kind okay. and generous and it just trickles down. Oh. It really does. I amazing. love that. That is so amazing. And only that could be translated to all work environments. Cause you're right. I know. The, I know. the head sets the tone. If you want to be caring and if you want to have communication flow up and down, or if you just want to be a dictator and be like, this is what we do. It, it, you're right. It's just, and you can do it, it, but nobody going to like having, like being on your set. Right. And that's okay mm-hmm. too. You can make beautiful. So I just want to make sure y'all not hearing these sounds that's coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, I think it's so important. And I think honestly, too, we've gotten over that in this day and age. I think with when COVID hit, we realized what was the the priority is our own well-being and no one's tolerating being on a, in a place where they're going to be ridiculed or you know, bullied or anything or disrespected. I think we were past that in day and age. People realized oh, we can go a whole year and a half without working. So what I'm not about to do is tolerate pain or angst here especially doing what we love doing what we love I'm really praying that that can change in all work environments get everybody out who don't deserve to be there or it's just like bad seeds because especially in art making what we do affects the world and you can't have I feel like you can't have a negative source or negative seeds when you're creating beautiful images that are literally going to change households so oh, may the Lord be all up in the mist. Yes. <laughs> yes. Amen. You're just mm-hmm. so beautiful that again, the energy and just the way you speak. I mean, you can, you could feel just your sense of being and that the confidence, it's it just, all of that is exuding and positivity. Mm-hmm. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's just, you are that boss lady. Like you said, you had the chain already. <laughs> yes. I tell you, I rock that chain for years. And I think I, well, I'm like, I'm living in, storage units right now but I got somewhere somewhere in one of these states it's still there and I got my boss neon light like it's just so important to me for black women to be empowered and it starts with empowering yourself so before I felt like a boss before I was a boss in any capacity I wore that around my neck so that if you even if I didn't believe it, everybody else saw it. You know? Yes. <laughs> so I it until I believed it. Yes. And and I just think and like it's affirmations. Mm-hmm. And I think what's the highest affirmation than being self-sufficient and also being able to employ other people is a blessing as well. So mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. my bosses and the bosses are the ones that have the the effect and the, the influence and the impact. And I would love to be able to impact people in a beautiful way. So you Why are. not financially help them too? <laughs> hey, I, you yeah. are. Okay. You're doing Let's that. Let's write them checks. Them, them checks with okay. a whole lot of zeros. I would so rather be the person writing the checks. Okay. <laughs> we love it. And you led right into our next question. I mean, as we spoke about one of your dear friends, Mimi, another boss lady conversations along yes. <laughs> that we love. And she's so supportive, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But she That's shared amazing. that you are a person who really believes in the power of positivity and manifestation, as you stated. So what's the one most powerful manifestation technique that continues to serve you well? Oh, <laughs> my most powerful manifestation technique has always been, well, outside of dreaming, is writing. You got to write the vision down and make it plain. And that's like the word. So if you ain't following, you know, like the Bible says to do it. So do it because you can speak a thing, but anybody can talk and talk rarely becomes action sometimes, but writing it down is creating a plan. It's a business plan and it's also a contract. And so I feel like when you write it down, excuse me, when you write things down, also you're agreeing with God that this is going to happen. And so I said prior about how I wrote down five things I wanted in my next job. I wanted something in New York. I wanted something with music involved. I wanted something fashion oriented and with black women 
and that began and ended in prayer. And all of those things happened with me in Harlem, for Harlem. Yeah. Every single thing. We pray at the beginning and to the end. I think there's like even pictures online of us praying together. Mm-hmm. The, the whole show is ran by Black women. Every department head is a Black person or a Black woman. And my, I'm, the stars of the show is Black women. I'm singing on the show and the fashion in the show is just crazy. And it's just like, goes to show like the Lord doesn't play games when he tells you when you do something and do it according to his word, mm-hmm. he will do it for you. He is not a man that he should lie. And I find that in a, a lot of moments in my life, when I wrote it down, it has manifested his claim to be because we could talk it, but make that thing a contract. Make that thing into a contract and a plan. Create that business plan for yourself Mm -hmm. and watch it come true. Because you abide by things a little bit differently when you write it down. Wow. Amen. Amen. I might have got that too because I used to get in trouble all the time in elementary school and they used to make us write all the time. So (laughs) it was just getting you ready. They was just getting you ready. Okay. For all the contracts I was going to make with the Lord. That's all. I love it. Thank you. you. We've heard you speak of the connection between authenticity and self love. So, how do you remain authentic to yourself and your character? Authentic to myself in my character, as in like playing Angie or just my own character? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. <laughs> I, would say, I would say both. Okay. The authenticity and acting is easy. I feel like you, everything that, every role that comes to you and every role that I've gotten has been specifically and uniquely written for me. Like, and I've mm. always been one of those people who like would tell other people about auditions because you can't take what's mine and I can't take what's yours. And I remember I was talking to Frances Fisher, who's a a incredible actress. She was in Titanic. And she said like spiritually, and I'm going to paraphrase and it's not going to be a good paraphrase because Frances Fisher is brilliant. But, (laughs) but she says like every audition you go on and every role that you take is an opportunity that your spirit needed to grow in that area. And if you didn't get it, it's because you were already filled in that moment. Whatever you needed in that area was filled in the room. But when you get the show and you're able to stretch and grow with that character, it's a life Mm -hmm. lesson that you needed because it's something you spiritually connect with the characters you you take. That's why um, you do. That's why it's so important to to decompress afterwards. And so I always feel like, too, the best auditions are the ones where you roll a little bit of you in it when you can't tell. Or the best roles or performances we see is when you can't tell who is the character and where the actor and the character ends or not. Mm -hmm. And so implementing those things that make you uniquely you is a way to just solidify what's already yours. So I think remaining authentic in the character isn't very hard for me at all. Like I always try to f- find a way to add some Shaniqua-isms into everything that I do. Now, remaining authentic, authentic in my character is a spiritual thing, right? Because the character that we have is like connected to the character of God. Mm. And I find that remaining authentic in my character in this industry that wants to tell you how you should look, how you should dress, who you should be. I felt like that training came for me as a child. I was severely, severely bullied up until, I think from like sixth grade up until my high school year. I used to be called every name in the book. I was called dog. I was told I couldn't sing. I was just like every single day just bullied after bullied and never made to feel like I was enough. And I think having to, and there was a moment in like the ninth grade when I came, I I transitioned from middle school from being bullied in the school. You're going to the same people in high school. And I remember making the decision that I was going to not be seen. My ninth grade year, I said, I don't want anybody to talk about me no more. I am tired. So I'm just going to wear sweatpants (laughs) all year. I'm going to wear gray and black and keep my hair in hats and just be in the back of the classroom and try not to be seen. And I still got dogged the whole entire year. And I, that, I had a pivotal moment there. I was like, well, there, if people are going to talk about you, 
if you're not, if you're quote unquote, not going to be enough for people, then you might as well do it while being authentically you. And so people going to have something to say, they're going to have something to say while I'm wearing what I want to wear, while I'm talking the way I want to talk, while I'm being and doing and creating the art that I want to create, because I'd rather be me authentically and have you say something about it rather than me conform or hide myself or, or shift my character, which is submit to be voluminous. I'm supposed to shine brightly. That is me. I am on this earth to shine vividly and vivaciously and encourage other people to shine brightly. So if I dim my light and you still don't like it, then I'm left with that, that guilt or that, that yes, the guilt of having mm. cut myself short, of dimmed myself. So I went through that training early at an early age of being like, you know what, they're gonna have something to say. And Hollywood always got something to say, but I'm gonna show up as me. Because if I don't get the job, at least I did it as me. <laughs> that's right. So that's where that character, that authentic, authentic character work came. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So I know that you've accomplished so much and it's still just the beginning for you. Because like you said, you are designed to shine. Amen. So I want to know, yes. What is that? What's one super scary yet amazing dream that you still have for yourself that you're like, you know what? Did I write it? Can I say it out loud? Like it still might make you a little nervous or Ooh, excited. Honey. <laughs> so many. So many. I'm trying to think of the one that's probably the scariest. The one honestly that feels the furthest away is I want to get into aviation. Ooh. I want people to have to come to me to fly. So I want to get in some kind of jet dealership. I want to own jets and, yep. and have you be able to have my name in association with that. Like, oh, I need to fly. Let me go rent something or buy something from Shaniqua Shande. And so I haven't, I literally, I, I don't know where the connection is going to happen. I don't know when it will happen. We're going to be on this air for a very long time. But the closest I've started doing to that is I took a flying class at the end of last year just to be like, okay, let me, is this something, let me, and it, it's long, Lord Jesus, and it's big, and I ain't even really wrote it down yet, but let me at least see if I can get in a plane and fly, like, <laughs> let me see how that feels, and <laughs> so wow. just to make sure, mm -hmm. and I just, I feel like there's such a freedom in that, and I think there's also something that they try to separate from Blackness as well, so that we can't be as free, so that we can't connect to other countries. They want to isolate us as much as possible. And I think a, a major way to break those isolation chains and to be able to connect to other places in, in the world is to have access to jets. And so that's my big old scary dream. <laughs> I'm down for it. Good one. <laughs> I love that one. Sign Thank me you. up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we can go to Dubai. We can go everywhere. Okay. Yes, Jamaica. <laughs> I love that dream. I mean, I hear freedom, right? Yes. And, and loving yourself and giving others exposure. I equate, you know, leaving the country as one of the growth experiences in my life. It allowed me to see something else because if you only see, you know, your neighborhood, that's like so limited. And when you can see others and others who look like us, like mm -hmm. that just adds the value. So thank you for that. So as we know, you're an amazing actress with an infectious laugh that we just so love. But there are so many talents. You have amazing talents and that beautiful voice. Hey. <laughs> so tell us about your music journey and this amazing single, something about you. Ooh, let me tell you. The Lord, I'm people are like, she gonna need to just go on and go to church and become a pastor. But the Lord be in my life. So I'm gonna talk about him. I'm gonna give him all the glory and give him all the praise. Amen. Because when I tell you it has been, because y'all see my bare foot just now. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I crossed my legs and was like, I mean, the toes are done, but I was like, you even got no shoes on. <laughs> so, I'm just grateful. I'm so, so grateful because I can honestly say with my music career that the Lord did it. I've been very much hiding music and something that I want to do, something that I love to do. It's one of, my, it honestly was my first love. 
like I love being on stage anyway. I was gonna get on stage any way possible, but my first encounters on stage was singing. And the first things in encounters in arts and diving in the art was always music. And then we found characters and things like that. But I always wanted to sing my earliest memories of my grandma singing Home to Me by Stephanie Mills from the Wiz. And, but I just, so many years of being bullied and trying to be quiet, I ran to acting, always loved acting, but I ran to acting wholeheartedly because it gave me a way to hide in characters. And so I was like, I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to, I'm just going to act. I'm just going to act. Not that I suffer for acting. I love acting, but it gave me a way to be on stage, but also hide behind the, the character development and the costuming and someone else's writing and music is just you. It is just you. But the Lord don't play no games with his children and and, there, and what he has for you, you cannot run, jo, Jonah, mm. you know, he, it will, he will spit you out right where you're supposed to be. Mm. And every acting job that has been pivotal in my career has been music related. So it was wow. like, literally, if you're going to act, you're going to sing. And I'm like, well, Jesus, I didn't think you want me to. I'm, are you always be like, God, why you made me? Why did you have me want to sing, wanting to sing? And I always feel like I've been the worst person, the worst singer in all of my classrooms. <laughs> and like, Lord, why do you why do you have this thing in me that feels so impossible? Mm. And again, I booked like a TV series or a, a YouTube Red series back when YouTube had its own um was making, were making their own TV shows. Mm -hmm. That was a, a spoof of like an American Idol. And then mm -hmm. from there I booked this play that was music related where I had to sing. And then my first like movie to go to theaters, I played a rapper and hit, then I landed Harlem where I had to sing. <laughs> and I've always written, right? Like always had songs and journals and was in a group with my best friend and my cousin in middle school where we didn't perform nowhere, but in, in my mama's living room. <laughs> but we had a girl group called Karma. And I, so I've been writing music forever. Writing has just been like, it's my oasis. It's my safe mm -hmm. space. Like I've mm -hmm. journaled since forever. And so I would have songs and music, but never really go and record it. Record it. And then during, during the pandemic, my homeboy was on um, Instagram and it was him and his friend. And he mm -hmm. had, they had these Gucci masks on and was right around the time of like of George Floyd and Armand Aubrey. And we were just mm -hmm. in, and pain. And so seeing black men in a cheap and an open rooftop outside with a Gucci mask on, mm -hmm. it just like, it just brought me so much joy. And I just hit him up, was like, I love this so much. Just dramatic. And he drove an hour out to where I was staying mm -hmm. to drop off a mask. And from that conversation, the next day we were in the studio. And the wow. only reason why I went too, because I associated with acting, I was like, okay, well, it'll be character work for Angie. It'll be, uh, it's good for me to learn about being a recording artist for Angie and music just started pouring out and mm -hmm. I had something about you, this track mm -hmm. for over a year since wow. the pandemic, wasn't going to release it, but Megan is just so daggone kind and supportive. She's so kind. So I would like, kind of like, Megan, would you direct something? She's like, girl, anything you want. And I'm like, well, if, if, if the Megan Good, one of your heroes says that you got to send it to her. And so I sent it to her and she's like, we are, and I honestly, I thought that she would be like, girl, hit me on the next one. You know, it's your first song. <laughs> like, Let me know later, you know, <laughs> when you get a little bit and she's like, we doing this. And even with her saying, we're doing this, I still was like, okay, well, maybe dragging my feet. She sent DP, her DP over so many times. Yeah. And just, and I say all that to say that my music is very much a product that like whatever God has for you mm -hmm. is going to happen. Can't nobody stop it. Not even you, mm -hmm. you can't stop it. And angels to pull it out of you. And I'm so grateful for the angels he pulled, he used to pull it out. Like even the first time the song got played on the radio, I won't gonna say nothing. I was in town doing like hosting or speaking at a panel and the, um, doing a radio interview. And she was like, I heard you got a song, we about to play it. And I'm like, what? Like, and so 
I'm just grateful for the Lord. I, and that's when I was, I feel so seen. I feel loved and, and taken care of and grateful. So great. I'm, I'm going to say grateful, grateful, grateful. So that's been my music journey. It's been orchestrated by God. And I wrote this song specifically. And a lot of the songs I write is either some form of therapy or a way of prophecy. I told you I write my vision down and I make it plain. Right. And this song and a couple other songs I have is the way that I want to feel next. I haven't yet to have like a really good love. Mm. I haven't had a good, healthy, steady love yet. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, let me write the, the kind of romance that I want and that will take part that will be believable for my life. Cause I've always prioritized work first. We're going to get this coin. We're going to get this bread. We're going to get these dreams <laughs> and, <laughs> and we are not here for the distractions. But I think mm -hmm. if you find the right one, he is not a distraction. He's an addition. And Ooh. that's what thing about you is, is this woman who was incredibly busy, minded her business and hustling. And then she meets this man who makes them feel like that she, she could be safe to prioritize love with him because she's never seen a good love. She's never had a good love, yeah. but she knows there's something here that's worth fighting for or worth exploring. Mm -hmm. So that's something about you. Oh God, <laughs> that is something about you, me. Okay. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of boss ladies out there. Oh, because yes. I yes. thought you was really talking about somebody. I was about to get into that. I'm like, okay, so you. <laughs> she is single. <laughs> Got it. I Got love it. it. I love it. Come back. Come back when, because you're not manifested this person. So come okay. on back. Bring them. Yeah. Yes. I you will. There's five okay, things written me. about him something about you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And I mean, you're right. Writing is therapy. I also write as well. And I mean, to put it on paper and just walk away, like you got it out. And there's something mm -hmm. about that. You feel better. You feel lighter. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I feel that creative. And I'm glad that you are now in that lane. And it feels like it's the right time because, again, you have the right support now. And mm -hmm. someone's pulling it out. And like you say, you're in spaces and people are asking you. So it's not like you're beating down people's door like, hey, I got a single. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's right there. It's all the timing. It's all about timing. I, I see it. And the angels, I mean, clearly they are surrounding and uplifting you and like, boom, boom, boom. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Thank you. It's yeah. just divine. It really yeah. is. And I, I feel like, you know, we always, we go on these journeys and your faith grows and it's, it's like faith by faith. And each time God does something, your faith expands more. And in this one, I'm like, Lord, you did this without me even being a willing participant. Ooh. Like, I mean, I went to the studio, I wrote it down, I recorded, but I mean, there was some things, but this one, I'm like, oh, okay, God. Okay, God, you are incredible, amazing. And so I'm just so grateful for this. And I hope that this inspires other people to just go for that thing that always felt so scary to them. And also trust that if you take the step, write it down, write the song, right? the studio will appear. If you buy that, what whatever it is, buy the office space, the employees will come. If you write that business plan, the investors will come. But you have to at least write it down. You have to, mm -hmm. and then be willing to go. And then be willing to go. That's right. You're right. When the angel said, let's go, we got to be willing to at least walk. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, so don't stand in your own way, right? Don't block mm -hmm. your own blessings. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, what boss ladies inspire you to stand in your greatness? Megan Good. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we love Megan. Megan Good and Megan Good and Megan Good and Megan Good and Beyonce. <laughs> I love hey. it. I love it. I just, I love me some Beyonce. Anybody knows? Like I, I feel like I'm so I'm like, uh, people like she always talk about Beyonce. Or like she has some such a stand. I am. I love me some B. She just encourages me to be the most, my most highest self, mm -hmm. to be my most confident self, to be my most fierce and ferocious and boss self. Mm -hmm. And her work ethic is just, oh, it's insane. Like work, you only know, work ethic and discipline are like my love languages. My middle name mm -hmm. is Tool. We talked about that. 
but my love language is work ethic and effort like people always Mm -hmm. like oh what attracts you to a man effort Mm -hmm. and I just love what you're able to do Mm -hmm. when you just put yourself to it and and it's not necessarily just talking about Beyonce but just like anyone talking about myself and other people talking about myself you don't have to be the most educated or I didn't go to Harvard or Yale, you know what I mean? Or Juilliard or any of these like incredible acting schools. I would have loved to, I didn't have the opportunity. But if you work hard, you get with yours and it don't mm. matter. You don't have to have the same, a certain amount of money. You don't have to have the connections. You don't have to have like be a size zero or anything else. If you work hard, mm. you can get with yours. And that, that's now goes against what I'm going to counteract or contradict myself with the American dream because it's not just always hard work that gets it. It's a lot of janitors who work incredibly hard or a lot of people who work crazy hard and don't see what they're worth. But at least in the art <laughs> yeah. or in my life, or at least from what I've received from Beyonce, if you work hard, yeah. you can make it happen. And I watched that too with Megan Good. That girl, that woman, excuse me, works hard. She is constantly working, constantly going, and then still showing up for other people. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that I've learned too, is that you can be so hard about getting what you got and that you get tunnel vision and very selfish and only focus on people supporting you and completely miss that, oh my God, my best friend had a show or my friend had a graduation or my friend had a wedding and not be able to show up to these things. And I'm like, no, you have to still set this time, the time aside to figure out how to show up for other people because being a boss is also giving back. So that's one thing I learned from Megan Good, Beyonce, and my mama. I know that's right. Alicia, Alicia Williams, honey. Those are my three bosses. <laughs> I love that. You know, you're a motivational speaker. I mean, I'm sure you know that, but <laughs> I mean, just in case you wanted something else to add to your list. I'm going to add that. No, for real. Like, I mean, I'm learning so much and just... We always think about, you know, the next generation to come. And I mean, they need a lot from my perspective and just to have the positive imagery and just your voice and telling your story, they can just so benefit from that. So I'm not trying to give you another job, but I'm just saying you you already doing it with this podcast and we're going to share it with the world. But a lot of things that you said, I think that's going to help others walk in their light because you got me ready. I'm like, okay. Let's go. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yes. So what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you so they don't miss anything that is coming up or your amazing contributions? I'm on the gram at Shaniqua Shine Day. I got a little link tree with all of my things on it, Shaniqua Shine Day. Um, I feel like I'm most active on Instagram and I'm just really excited. I got some amazing things cooking. I got some really Mm -hmm. cool things coming. So stay tuned. The video is out. Something about you. Hey, we love it. Black love and black excellence. Yes. And directed by the Megan Good. And yeah, I think just hit me up on that gram. Follow my link link tree and go on to subscribe. And then also, I heard you say international. She's an international household name. Let me know where people from. I'm so interested in, in traveling to other countries and connecting with people in other countries. Yes. So hit me up. Let me know where you are based and if I should come out to your city. Hey. Well, absolutely. They will. We have an <laughs> amazing international following and our highest percentage is in Panama. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. let me go on to Panama then. Yeah. Okay. Let me you like it. Watch Lady Pan, um, panel in Panama. Yeah, love that. We love that. That That, that is on our list of things. Yes. Come in. I'm there. All right. We will. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Well, listen, Shaniqua Sean Day, you are wonderful. I just want to do a recap of the many dreams that you dropped with the boss ladies today. Number one, write the vision and make it plain. When you write your vision, you create a plan and you agree with God on it and it will happen. Number two, if you dim your light, people are still going to talk about you and you still won't be enough for them. So you might as well be authentically you. Number three, whatever God has for you is for you. He will send his angels to pull it out of you every single time. Number four, 
Work ethic and discipline can be a love language because it truly allows you to get what's yours. And number five, set aside the time to show up for other people because boss ladies show up for others. Mm. You made you, me sis. sound so good. <laughs> so that was you. You're amazing. That was you. <laughs> I said that that's nice. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> we hope everyone enjoyed connecting with the wonderful boss lady, Shaniqua Shande, and learning about how to boss up by embracing your own talent while sharing it with the world. Please come again and we thank you and look forward to seeing you on Harlem. And don't forget yes. to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are so blessed and have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you, Queen. Come on back. Thank you. Yes.